Welcome to what will probably be a short series of tutorial videos on Arcade EIP. Now, there's already a introduction video that I've put together that you can take a look at, so this video really won't cover all of the features of Arcade EIP, but I'd like to at least go through the installation and the main quick start guide just so you can see how it installs, and what its basic features are. Now, in order to install Arcade EIP, you'll need to first obtain the latest zip file. The latest version as of the making of this video is 0.3.2, and you'll need to take that and unzip it into an empty folder that has read-write access on your machine. I've already created one here called Arcade EIP, so I will unzip this and copy the files into that folder. In this folder is a file called MAME Quick Start, which is the subject of this video. So we're going to go ahead and double click on this to see what it has to say. Up at the top it says unzip Arcade EIP to a dedicated folder. We've already done that. It also has a couple additional comments. One saying that we are assuming that MAME 172 or higher is installed. MAME 172 added support for direct input, which Arcade EIP uses. It's not absolutely required, but it is nice to have. Another nice to have is if you have a no-nag build of MAME. Again, not required, but if you have that, that's what you want to use. Now moving down to the instructions for the configuration, let's start here with number one. Double click create config.bat to create our configuration file, our kdip.ini. So let's go ahead and find that file. It's right here and double click that. We got a command window and an indication that it's completed and we see that there is now a file in our folder called arcadeip.ini. Let's go back to our file here. The next step is to load arcadeip.ini into a text editor like Notepad or Notepad++. And I would recommend Notepad++ since the syntax highlighting is very nice to have, makes things quite clear. So this is our configuration file loaded into Notepad++, fulfilling step two. Step three says, in the system MAME section of the arcadeip.ini, edit the exe full path to match your system. So let's go back over here and scroll down to the system MAME section, which is right here and locate the exe full path and we see that it is the d drive emulators mame mame.exe so on your machine just locate your mame.exe file and change this path to whatever it is this happens to be correct for my machine so i'm just going to leave it this way so that fulfills step three. Oh, by the way there's a comma and the word min at the end. Don't touch that. Leave that there. Step four. In the general section, set seed ROM to any favorite ROM you know you have. So what's a seed ROM? Well, let's scroll up to the top and see where that is, first of all. In the general section, there is a line that says seed ROM equals main galaga.zip. Now, if you already have Galaga as one of your ROMs, you can just leave this. Otherwise, place the name of one of your ROMs into this line. Now, it's not critical which one you pick. I would tend to pick your favorite one. What this line is for is when Arcade EIP runs, if it has nothing else to launch, it will launch this particular game. So that fulfills step four. Step five, if you'd like to hide the mouse cursor during gameplay, set hide cursor to one in the front end OS section. So let's find that. 
I think that most people would prefer not to have a mouse cursor hanging around while they're running this. So if you don't want it, just set this hide cursor equals one in the front end OS section. Now I would suggest that the first time you try doing this, that you leave it set to zero and endure the mouse cursor on your screen, just because if something does go awry, something hangs or whatever, you will not have lost your mouse. But I'm gonna go ahead and set this to one because I know it will work. So that fulfills step number five. Then finally, step number six, and this is optional. If you have them, copy a set of game logo files named after your ROMs into the Assets Main Logos ROM folder. Now, where is that and what is this for? Well, under Arcade EIP, you will see that there is an Assets folder, and under that, Main Logo and System. I'm sorry, ROM. Now, Arcade EIP will display logo files in some of its activities. For example, during startup, it will show a logo file or while you're browsing through games. Now, if you happen to have a set of logo files that you can copy into this folder, then you will be able to see logos for all of your games. If not, then you won't see them. You'll just see the name of the game. Now it does so happen that I do have the logos for this. So if I scroll down to my assets and look for MAME, I have a folder called logos here, which happens to contain all of my logos. So I'm gonna come back up here and copy all of these over into my logo ROM folder. Okay, I've skipped ahead so you don't have to watch that copy operation. All of the logos have now been copied over into my logo ROM folder, as we can see here. And of course, this isn't the only way you can do this. If the logo files are already somewhere on your machine, you could just change the path to them. But for now, I think we are ready to run Arcade IP. Let's go back to our quick start guide. We completed step number six. We've copied the logo files. And now it says, now just double click on eip.exe to run your seed game or we could run a specific game if we wanted by typing EIP with the name of the emulator system, followed by the name of the game. All we're gonna do is just double click on EIP and see what happens. Okay, when we start the game, uh, we get a startup screen showing the logo Galaga which comes from the folder that we populated uh, just a few moments ago. And once we get into the game here, I'll start it up. Just to make sure everything's working properly. And indeed we do have control, buttons are working, and so things look good so far. Now, if I wanna pause the game, I can press the pause button. And Arcade EIP will display, if this is available, the control panel map. Now these control panel maps are stored in the Assets Main uh, Controls folder, um, which is in the same area where we populated the Logos folder. So if you happen to have uh, control panel layout images, you can place them in that folder and they'll display upon pause. If I unpause at this point, then I'll go back to my game. If I pause, because I want to look at the control panel layout, I can do that. Now there's one other feature in the pause menu that I'll also show you here since it's something that's new as well. Uh, also in the Assets folder, uh, particularly in the Assets Main Meta Info folder, if you have them, you can place a history.xml file and or a main info.dat file. 
Uh, by default, I provide one for you in that folder uh, for the current version of MAME, but you can always grab your own as new versions of MAME come out. And if you want to see those, the, uh, the, the information in those text files, you can just use your joystick when you're in the pause menu to move to the right and you'll see the data screens for uh, history, XML, and also MAME info.dat. The two of those files will be appended if both of them are available. And at any point we can also go back to our game and continue playing. Now of course Arcade EIP also offers a uh, game selection menu for you as well. If you press and hold the exit button for a couple seconds you'll see this menu displayed. Initially this menu will show your master favorites list but because we have no favorites at this point, because we've just installed this, there's nothing shown there. However, to the right of it, which I can access by just moving my joystick to the right, I can see a list of main games. And so I can pick another game from this list if I wish. I'll pick, uh, say, 1942, revision B, and press the fire button, and that game will load. So that also is working. All right, so 1942 is now loaded, but I don't want to play it. I want to go back into the menu to show you one other thing. Now, choosing a game off of the master list of games, uh, which may consist of hundreds or even thousands of games, you can also set up lists of favorites. Now, to use favorites, you can toggle, first of all, between the master list for any particular system and its favorites list by using the Alt key. So, for example, if I press Alt, I see that there are no games in my favorites list for me. If I press the Alt key again, then I return back to the main list. Now, if I want to add a uh, game to the favorites list, I can just press the space bar. So, for example, I'll press the space bar on 1942, which will add it to the favorites list. So if I toggle back to the favorites, I'll see that 1942 has been added. I'll toggle back and select maybe a couple more games. Ooh, let's choose 1943. We'll add that one by pressing the space bar. And by the way, the Alt key and the space bar are probably already mapped on your control panel as the main Fire 2 and Fire 3 buttons. So I've just added 1943, and oh, let's add 4D Warriors to the list by pressing the space bar or fire button 3. And I'll toggle over to Favorites, and we'll see that all three of those games are now in my Favorites list for MAME. Now, if I use my joystick and move to the left to my Master Favorites list, we'll see that those three games are also on my Favorites list. And that's how it works. Whenever you add games to a favorites list of a local system, then they will also be added to the master favorites list. Because I only have MAME as a system installed in this particular instance, I can only add MAME games. But if I had other emulated, emulated systems installed and configured, then I would be able to create a master's favorites list that is composed of games from all different kinds of systems. Now, the very last thing I'd like to show you in this uh, tutorial video on the Quick Start Guide is the Auto Switch list, which is to the left. Now, initially, this Auto Switch list would have been empty when we first started up. However, because we've now played 1942 and Galaga, these have been added to the Auto Switch list. Now, as I play more games, this list will be updated to include those games, up to 20 games by default after which it will continually modify the list in order to only show the top 20 most played games. Now, just like any other list, you can remove games manually from this list, add games manually, even suppress certain games permanently from this list, uh, just as you like. You could also increase the number of maximum games in this list uh, to any number that you like, or decrease it to any number that you like. You can also um, opt to completely manually manage this list rather than having it um, auto-created. So all of those options are available to you. But what is the auto-switch list? 
Well, it's the list of games that Arcade EIP will cycle through when it's left idle, but which always remain at all times playable. By default, Arcade EIP will switch through these games every five minutes, but in this sped up configuration, you can observe what the experience is like. At any time, I can walk up to the machine and start playing the displayed game, or bring up the menu to choose a game of my choice. Well, that about does it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.